Hello everyone and welcome back to part 3, the final part of our loot RPG trinket uh, mini-series that we're doing for our command block RPG series. Now last time we went over actually making trinkets that you could hold in your offhand slot that did cool things like potion effects. Now this usability can be expanded to all sorts of effects that you can mess around with different commands in Minecraft, like holding something in your offhand that randomly teleports the players and all sorts of crazy stuff. But today we're gonna be looking at something a bit more in depth. All right, so far we've learned how to make sort of custom armor loot with different attributes and offhand trinket loot that you can swap for potion effects or you could just do the same thing we did in the armor, get a health increase and movement increase on their attribute modifiers when they're held in their offhand, whatever you wanna do. Now that's all well and good, but I can see that we're already running into a bit of an issue if we want to make a large-scale RPG, and that of course is the deal of real estate. We only have uh, four armor slots, one offhand slot, and then whatever we're holding in our main hand. That's only six slots. That's not enough. If you ever play roguelikes, like me constantly, that's pretty much all I play these days, you know that you want to have loads of items, passive effects, active effects, all sorts of crazy items, or just the ability to have multiple different items that you can switch between. But we only have these six slots, give or take. Well, my fellow Minecraft command enthusiasts, what if I told you we could actually make use of the entire inventory? Yes, that's right. Anything that your player has in its inventory could be used as a trinket. Now, slow down, I hear you say, but Nick, that is too much loot. That's too much to keep track of. And to that I say, you're right, it is. And this is actually probably where you'd want to have a data pack to keep track of all of this. And that is something that we'll touch on in our next RPG-like video, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. But for now, we're still not really going to do that. I'm going to do it in command functionality, just so you can see how it works in the command blocks. But yes, the more inventory items you have as lootable trinkets, the more you're going to want to organize them in an actual text code document, rather than just slinging them in command blocks all over your world. But I'm still going to show you, because our? I don't know, something like that. So for our next lootable trinket, we are going to go ahead and just make a simple glistering melon that increases a player's max health when it is anywhere in their inventory, not just in their offhand slot. This could be great for making collectible health upgrades that players could keep in a specific slot anywhere in their inventory. You could just keep incrementing their health as long as they have inventory space, which is pretty cool. So how are we going to do this? Well. Health is actually a tricky subject, so I thought I'd roll a two into one here of showing how we could make inventory functions and how we could actually deal with things like max health, which don't like to be reset very nicely. And this is probably the most complex one that we're going to talk about, so strap in. All right, just like before and for our final time, over to MC Stacker. You guys should have this bookmark by now. If you don't, what are you doing? But we're going to go back to the give command, as we've been doing the whole time, to test out with these items. And we're just going to go to the drop down and very quickly type blistering, and that'll pop up with blistering melon slice. You can go ahead and press enter. Uh, and just like before, we're going to give it a quick name. Uh, we are actually going to change this to be health fruit, like you saw in that little example as I was looking at the item frame. And this is going to be another common item. It's just a small health increase, so it's nothing too crazy. So we'll set it back to green. So just like that, we have health fruit, and we have it as green. We'll give this one some lore too, uh, and this will say... Increases max health in inventory, except we don't need that to be capital. And then maybe for a little flavor text, we'll just add in a delicious with an exclamation mark. Sure, something simple like that. And then same as before, uh, we will lower the lore section, come over to enchantments, and we will give it the glint to give the players the indication this is a unique item. Okay, very quickly, I want to go into modifiers here. I want to click add attribute modifier, and you can see it's already set up that we have max health. This is awesome. Perfect. Uh, we can have our max health when we hold our melon. Well, why didn't we just do this from the get-go, right? Uh, now here we have max health. That's right. Uh, we want two, which equals a heart. Uh, it's just a flat amount, so we'll increase that. And our slot, if we come over here, ah, yep, this is where the problem in lies. You don't have inventory as a choice here. You have any, but like I said earlier, that's any of the six main slots, main hand, off hand, and all of your armor slots. So this won't actually detect unless it's in one of those slots, which is no good. That's not what this tutorial is for. So get rid of that attribute modifier. It's no good. Bad attribute modifier. But just like the magma cream, we will just generate the item, copy it, bring it over to Minecraft. Okay, back in the game. Come to the command block. Control V, paste. There we go. Hit the button. Bam, look at that. We're speed running at this point. We got our health fruit. We go ahead and mouse over it. Health fruit increases max health and inventory. Delicious. As you notice, if I pop over to survival, 
my max health is where it's at. It has not changed. Doesn't matter. Could be anywhere in my inventory, my offhand. Unfortunately, you cannot put this melon on your head. That is sad. But we got nothing. No max health yet, as we shouldn't. That is where the next part comes into play. So, same as before, we want to first see if we can actually detect a glistering melon uh, within our inventory. So, I already have something pre generated here. I gotta pop over to command uh, creative mode. Rather than walking th you through everything again, I'll just walk you through what's new. So, I will control V. And if we come back here, same as before, we're executing at all players in their inventory uh, from their NBT data. Um, and this time we are checking for a glistering melon slice. Um, and we are going to also look for the display and the lore and the enchantments and all that. The difference is you'll notice we have not checked for a slot. In this way, we can actually just see if this interesting glistering melon is anywhere in our inventory. If I go ahead and press this button, there, you can see it rings true as it doesn't matter. We have our enchantments and our lore and everything. Uh, it's the same way that we built our flame guard bubble before. This time we just haven't checked for a slot, but I made sure that everything was all up to speed. All of the text is in there. Everything from MC Stacker we've just kind of written out in here. So we know that we can check. It doesn't matter where in the inventory it is. I can hit it. True. True. And in my main hand, true. <laughs> Perfect. On the head? Nope, that still doesn't work. That's maybe for another video. Perfect. Okay. So now we know that we can detect for the melon. All we need to do is work on increasing our max health. And this is where things get a little dicey. So bear with me. Health is a very confusing subject in Minecraft, as is changing your attributes when you can't just do it through something like MC Stacker. So let's start at the beginning. We want to take this command, same as before. We want to come into our repeating command block. We want to paste, and we just want to get rid of the run say true. We do want to run a command, but this time we're going to want to run the attribute command as we're looking to alter the max health of a player, which is stored in their attributes, as we mentioned earlier. Now it starts off pretty self-explanatory. You see it's looking for a selector. Again, this is at S or the person that we've already looked at, the one that's executing the command. Remember it was execute as all players with this in their inventory, running it as that same player if one is found. We actually don't need any more brackets there as we've already determined what player we're looking for. And then it's going to come up with a list of attributes. Now I have Forge installed for, again, a couple of those client helping mods. Um, so I'll see these Forge ones here. But generally you'll just see the Minecraft ones that we saw um, earlier with maybe a couple extra like horse jump strength, which is not really something that we need to worry about right now. But the one that we're looking for is Minecraft generic max health. So I can go and I can just click and that'll autofill for me. Okay, what's next? So we know that we're changing an attribute and this time we're changing the max health of a player when they're holding this melon anywhere in their inventory. But we get these three weird parameters, base, get, and modifier. Get is really helpful for storing things in scoreboards and just checking what different attributes of players are. This will just actually return uh, my max health if I, if I did this right now. Base is you can set the default base of a character, which is, again, with health, really cool because you could set a player's max health to be, say, three hearts, like Legend of Zelda or something like that. But where things get, unfortunately, confusing is in the modifier parameter, which is the one we want. So I'll go ahead and press modifier and press space. And now you can see we have three more. Add, remove, and value. Well, for us, we're going to be working on add. Don't bog yourself down with these other two right now. We'll at least talk about remove in a minute. So we want to add a modifier because we're adding on some max health. We're not setting our, our max base health uh, because that would uh, come up with some weird things later on in our game. We're just adding onto our max health as long as we have the melon in our inventory. So we'll go ahead and press add. And if I hit space again, you can see we now have an incorrect argument. Strangely, even though we just press space, if I start typing, you can see we have an invalid UUID. Now, what the heck does that mean? At the risk of not making this video any longer than it already is, I'm going to explain this very briefly. Basically, like I said earlier, a UUID is a unique identifier that pretty much anything in Minecraft has. Entities, more often than not, is what you'll be encountering uh, in the game. This basically is just a random string of numbers and letters to let the game know that this, whatever it is, this zombie, this horse, this pig, is completely unique. There's none like it. Even if it's cloned from another one, it will have its own unique UUID. Obviously, game files need things like this to keep track of individual entities, even if they have the same attributes as other entities. Now, don't worry. You don't have to do any fancy math to come up with your own or anything like that. 
that this website right here, which will be in the link in the description, will just generate you some UUIDs uh, for you to place in your game. Because basically you need to give your attributes their own unique identifiers. This used to be a little easier in earlier versions of Minecraft, but they require you to have full UUIDs now. So you can see I can just hit this generate random and all these different values will change. Um, but for us, we just need this hexadecimal value right here. I've already copied and pasted one and we can return back to Minecraft. Okay, now we're back in the game. All we need to do is press space after this ad. You'll see the incorrect pop up again. And I will just control V, paste once more. And my hexadecimal value pastes. And you can see we're good. We don't need to worry about anything else. We are green. Um, and I can press space. Uh, now we have to add a few more parameters here, uh, just so the game knows we're not spoofing anything, not messing around. Uh, the first is the name of this modifier. Uh, for us, we will call it something that we can remember, like melon health. Now this isn't something you'll usually have to call unless you're doing a lot of funky things with storing attributes and scoreboards and you need to reference them later. If you're just making trinkets, I don't think you'll actually ever need to visit this value again, but it still helps to name them things so if you look back at your code you can tell what attributes are what. So we'll name it melon health, and then finally we get to the actual value of what we want to adjust the health to be. So we want it two points, or that's two half hearts, so in Minecraft that's one extra heart. And you see that we actually have our math at the end there. We can either add, multiply, or multiply the base. Now for us, and the most simple one is just add. So we have this in an always active repeating command block. And if I press done, it doesn't look like anything funky has happened. I still have my health fruit. But if I go back over to survival and wait for the chat to clear, you can see just peeking out is another heart, which is awesome. That, that means it's worked. Now the glistering melon could be anywhere in our inventory that health fruit. It could be in the offhand. It could be here. It could be there. And just to prove to you that this is a new thing, if I go ahead and take some damage, yep, we refilled. The heart didn't disappear or anything like that. Actually, I have a little Little, a little ouch machine over here. So if I go ahead and do that, uh, you can see that the heart does indeed empty. Um, but assuming I have enough saturation and food, which might take a minute to uh, repopulate. There we go. We'll just eat away. That heart fills back up, which is awesome because that means we've given our players an extra max heart based on their attribute just by holding this cool trinket they found. Now there is one issue, and this is pretty much how we're going to wrap up this video. If I get rid of our health fruit, I still have the heart. I, I still have it. Um, we were talking about exploits earlier. Uh, oh, I don't need to, <laughs> to jump off high places. Even if I don't have it in my inventory, I can still heal back up to it. That heart doesn't go away. Now, we mentioned this with the magma cream, but that one was easy to get rid of because we were just giving ourselves a potion effect, and as soon as we took it out of our inventory, we could just, you know, if the potion effect was two seconds, it would fade. The issue is this isn't a potion effect. This is a direct attribute modifier. So how are we going to fix that? Well, if we pop back to creative here, I have a secondary repeating command block. And if we pop into this, we want to take this command from right here, grab it all, copy it, paste it, make sure we're on always active and repeat. And remember when we were looking at the parameters earlier, we do everything the exact same up until this modifier add. So if I come down here, we can change this to be modifier remove. Now it's really important that we have the exact same UUID, that this doesn't change from the previous command block. If we change one of these numbers, it's not going to get rid of our actual attribute that we modified earlier. Luckily for us though, that's all we need. So if I go ahead and cancel out of that, you can see we don't, we don't need anything else out here. We're done after that UUID. So now if I go ahead and press done, what's gonna happen? Well, luckily for us, I still have the heart and I will eat some steak just to make sure that we have our regen ready. Oh, the hearts disappeared. That's interesting because I still have the health fruit. Well, unfortunately, there's one more thing we forgot to do. You see, these command blocks are going to battle for supremacy here because what we've actually written is as long as we have the melon in our inventory, give us a max heart based on our attributes. And as long as we have the melon in our inventory, subtract a max heart based on our attributes. You see where the problem lies? What we actually have to do is come into this command block and instead say, as long as we don't have this specific melon in our inventory, get rid of that extra heart. And that's really, really easy. All you have to do is come over here to where it says NBT equals, and then put an exclamation part right before the opening brackets. And I'll hit done. Now that inverses our effect there, which means now it's looking for everything that we pasted in there, but the negative or the inverse of it. So for example, if it was looking for something in our inventory, it's now looking for as long as we don't have that in our inventory. If you want proof, I'll go ahead and press Q. 
Now you'll notice the heart is still there. Don't panic. Unfortunately, Minecraft needs some time to updates, and usually health will update with some damage. So if I go ahead and change that, sure enough, it took a couple seconds there, but the heart is officially gone. Now this might not be as instant as you want and slightly exploitable, but as soon as the player takes health, it, it will go down to their correct health amount. And unfortunately, that's not really something you can get around in Minecraft unless you had this command block followed by a chain of doing small amounts of instant damage to, to get rid of any extra hearts they may have had for a few seconds. But there we go. If I pick up the life fruit again, there's the heart. If I drop it and take some ouchies to update that, uh, the heart disappears. We've officially done it. And that just about does it for this video. Wow, <laughs> that was a long one. But... We managed to get through it. I thought it'd be pretty important to show you examples of uh, different loot types that you could make. And I'd rather put it into one video than switching it up from just a couple videos because I thought it was all similar enough that it could just kind of pertain to itself. But we started with making some pretty basic attribute and enchanted armor, or you could do the same thing with a weapon. Uh, then we moved on to making items with potion effects that you could plop in an offhand slot. And then finally, making use of the entire inventory to have items that change your attributes like your max health no matter where they are, and how to actually disable those effects if players aren't currently holding them. Now that we actually have ways of generating uh, this cool loot, I think that we're going to need to come up with ways to make sure the player gets a hold of them. Fortunately for us, we already have a couple of those, including we could have our custom enemies hold them and then have a small chance to drop them. We could have our villagers sell them, our custom trades and things like that. But what I was thinking in the next RPG video is we could actually come up with something that is quite fun in a lot of RPGs, and that is a chest opening system not too dissimilar to loot boxes. No, whoa, whoa, my YouTube, don't demonetize, not yet, please, please, all right? Just, just hear me out, all right? We're gonna make something similar and it's going to be pretty cool and allow you to have different rarity tiers in your loot tables for your loot boxes. But we will save that for next time. So until then guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you learned anything new, make sure you leave a like. It really helps the channel out. And hey, if you're interested in more of these types of tutorials, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified when more of them come up. Per usual, if you guys have any suggestions, things you wanna know more about in Minecraft, uh, maybe I haven't covered yet, or maybe you want me to delve deeper, just go ahead and pop it down in the comments. I'll see if I can get to it, maybe make a video. I've had some good, interesting ideas, actually, uh, specifically from the comments, and I've tried to sort of follow up on some of those um, to go more in-depth in the future. So that is awesome. More announcements coming soon on the YouTube feed. Does anyone does anyone actually check that, the post section on YouTube? I, I have no idea. Um, but the last thing I wanted to say is, if you like this video in particular, and you want to watch me... I don't know, maybe generate some more funky items. There's a lot of creative ones I've, I've come up with on my own time uh, in this game. If that's something that you want to watch me do and maybe give me suggestions and see how we could do that together, maybe I'll stream it. I was considering it maybe here on YouTube or over on Twitch. I do have a Twitch, although I've been pretty inactive on it for a little while now. If that's something you're interested in, want community-driven ideas for item generation or just to see me play with command blocks for <laughs> an hour or two, Maybe write it down in the comments. If we get enough drive for that, I'll set up a stream and I'll let you guys know and we can do some cool command stuff together. But that's all the announcements for this time. It's already been long enough. So until next time, guys, see ya.